Hey, what's guys? Welcome back to the channel. On this episode, I want to talk to you about the Victron Pure Sine Wave Phoenix line of inverters. And this one right here, which is the Phoenix 48 1200, meaning 48 volt 1200 model, is probably the best one to get. And I would highly recommend uh, anyone looking at this type of inverter to get this one uh, for all the you know reliability and also the capability issues that you get with this. And also the benefit of being on the 48 volt platform uh, because 48 volts, you're going to find a lot of common 48 volt batteries. And because it's 48 volts and not 12 volts or 24 volts, you can get pretty much the same amount of power using thinner cables, right? So you don't have to worry about thick cables. You don't have to draw as much current. You're not losing as much uh, due to heat and resistance and ohms and all that kind of stuff, right? So if you're looking at the Phoenix line of inverters, I would highly recommend you get the 48 volt model and also the 1200 VA mainly because you just have a lot more power capability, right? So we're gonna be talking about this inverter and then we're gonna be using this inverter to build this awesome power station, which is really, you know, five kilowatt hour power station with Bluetooth connectivity that allows you to connect to the inverter and the battery. You can see all that's going on. So if you wanna know more about that, stick with us. So this right here is a Victron Energy Pure Sine Wave Inverter. And like I said, this is the 48 volt model. They do make this line of inverters, the Phoenix line of inverters in the 12 volt and 24 volt. They also have other models. Like I, I forgot what the models are, maybe like a 300, 500, 800 or something like that. But it goes up to 1200 VA. And this is in volt amperes, right? So if you wanna try to figure out what that converts to, you can figure it out mainly because your power factor and depending on what you're gonna use it for, it's gonna be you know obviously different. But in the US, for most basic consumer electronics, just assume that 1200 VA is somewhere around 850 watts. Just assume that, right? It's not perfect, but like I said, it depends on what devices you're powering and all kinds of stuff. So somewhere around 850 watts continuous. And uh, this specific inverter will be able to peak up to, I believe it was like 2200 watts. So if you need to start uh, you know, a pretty decent size uh, appliance, or electronic or tool, you can get it started with this, even if this can't keep it running all the time. For instance, uh, this is able to start a compressor or depending on the size of your compressor and it would start the compressors I have, but it won't able to keep it running. So the surge capability of this inverter is awesome, mainly because it's a low uh, frequency transformer based inverter. So anyways, point is this is a good inverter and they make all different models. All right, so let's get into it. Uh, so this, uh, inverter I have mounted in this uh, toolbox and this is from Rigid, uh, no affiliation or anything like that. This is a tool manufacturing brand in the US or a brand, I'm, I'm not sure if they manufacture or hire somebody else, right? But it's a brand in the US, it's made for toolboxes and we have it mounted on this plywood um, inside of this box just to keep it from swatching around. This uh, power toolbox stuff here, plastic isn't super thick. So the idea was to mount it on the plywood so that the screws have a lot more bite to hold, right? So some people are gonna say, well, you should have mounted on, you know, wood cause it's flammable, but you know, you know I'm, I'm just gonna say, do at your own risk. Uh, if you mount it on fiberboard, you can do that, but then it doesn't have a lot of holding power. So, you know, pick and choose, right? So like I said, this right here is the inverter mounted in there and it fits almost perfectly in here. As you can see, you have to press it down a little bit in order to get it to close, but I am perfectly okay with that, mainly because that holds the inverter tight, right? Uh, so that's awesome. So uh, most of you know, if you have Victron uh, devices, there's different kinds of Victron communication protocols. The one we have here in this corner is the Victron VE Direct Bluetooth Smart Dongle, and it connects to the inverter using the VE Direct protocol. So let me go ahead and get this, this connected here. We'll unmount this from the power system. And then if you see here, it's a Bluetooth dongle that's connected via this black wire. 
uh, to this location right here, which is VE direct. And let's talk about it, right? So on this side of the inverter, it's very simple. You have uh, DC power positive in, right? DC power negative right here. And then you have the blue uh, VE direct communication port right here. You have this jumper in case you need it to, you know, remote control it and that kind of stuff. And it has the grounding uh, terminal right here. And it has the LEDs right here. Power green is good. Alarm LED is red. It'll go off in case you have, you know, uh, you know, like an overload or something like that. And you can go inside the app to check, you know, what the alarm is. And there's all kinds of alarms um, that it can tell you or warn you about, but it's pretty simple. So it has three modes here, on, off, and eco. And let's talk about that, right? So on means the inverter's on. It's just powering, uh, it's just gonna be converting DC power to AC power. Off is obviously off. And eco is interesting mainly because what it does is it kind of monitors the amount of power that's being asked of the inverter on the AC side and then when it crosses a certain threshold it'll kick the inverter on and start you know inverting the DC power to AC power and that's a very useful feature to have if you're not always going to be drawing power from this inverter so yes this inverter is very efficient but it still has an overhead where some of that overhead is you know kind of going to waste because it's just sitting on like idle consumption that's as they call it right so you can use eco mode and you can set the threshold of what uh that where you want that to be in the app. And then uh, when it you know draws power, it'll kick on. So in certain situations where you're just using power sporadically, you can just leave it in the on mode. And then whenever you need the power, the inverter will be on. But if you're just using power, let's just say, every other minute or every five minutes or something like that you may not need that uh, because you know just the constant cycle of on and off might be a thing but if for whatever reason you want this to come on only when um, uh, you, you need to draw a lot of power from it then that's what eco mode is used for right so this is a pretty simple device on this side very few connections you don't even need this bluetooth dongle uh, if you want to just run basic but it's nice to have because you can look at how much it's drawing you can also you know set basic configuration like what threshold you want the eco mode to be but like i said all you need is positive negative i have it connected to this eight gauge wire and this anderson connector which connects to the battery under it and that's where we'll go next right so if you look at it on here, uh, you'll see it has in the US 120 volt receptacle. If you're obviously in Europe in different places, you have different sizes. And this closes almost perfectly, like I said, in my opinion, because you have to press it down to uh, actually get it closed. And in my opinion, that's a little bit more ideal because it keeps the inverter from trying to get dislodged or move around, All right? So here you go, pretty simple, basic. This is where the battery is, and the battery is also connected with this Anderson connector 8 gauge wire. Uh, there is a breaker that I've installed here, uh, mainly to completely isolate um, the, uh, the connection from the battery, even though the battery has a built-in BMS and breaker. But uh, for my instance, I just wanted a hard breaker that could completely isolate the connections, right? So that's how that goes. My, I know it looks like it's on, but I have installed mine upside down, mainly because of where the line and load ter terminals were. So it can open this. And this is an EG4 uh, waterproof battery. So this battery, I believe I got as a refurbished battery and I can't remember how much it was, like 700, 800 bucks, something like that, refurb. And it's like a two year warranty versus, you know, their, their standard warranty, but it's a waterproof battery. I believe it's designed to be used for like marine applications and golf carts and stuff like that. And because of those golf cart applications, it can actually, uh, t do a continuous output of about 200 amps. So it's great. So if you need more than just one inverter, you could just get one of these batteries and you know connect two, three, four, as many as you need to get that going, mainly because the Phoenix inverter, at least the 1200 VA model, the 48 volt one will draw up to, I think it was like 30 amps or something like that, right? So you can get a, more of those inverters to one battery. But for the sake of this, we have this battery, negative terminal, positive terminal, the positive goes into this breaker here, right? And then breaks that connection. And then all it does is connect via Anderson power connector to that, right? And this Anderson power connector is really awesome because these power connectors can take a lot of amps and it's almost dummy proof. It's idiot proof. You can't install it reversed, right? So check this out. If you take this here, if I can get it on the component right there, I'll show you this. 
This is the positive, negative, right here, positive, negative, right? So this way it works perfectly because that's designed to go and it snaps, right? But for some reason, if you're like drinking too much, it is impossible to connect it in reverse uh, because of the design of the, of the shape and the connection, you can't do it. Only way to get it done is that way and this system will lock together like that on both sides, right? And then it is a pretty solid uh, power station that is ready to go. Uh, and this is, I would say, highly capable because for whatever reason, if you wanted a second inverter like this, you just add that on the top of here, you lock that into place, and then you have two of those inverters. Uh, and you can make it modular. So if you just need one, you just take the one, you need the two, you take the two. And because it's on wheels, it just rolls all everywhere you need it to go. So let's talk a little bit about this entire system, right? So the first time we built this, we used the uh, EG4 3000 uh, EVH all-in-one invert to do that, but it didn't fit in here, which was a little bit of a disappointment. Uh, but that one had, had, I would say, a lot more upgrades, mainly because that one was 3000 watts. It also was an all-in-one, so it could charge the battery and it could also, it, it could charge the battery from wall outlet or it could charge the battery from solar. This is really just a dummy inverter. It's a smart inverter because you have connectivity, but it's just straight up inverter. All it does is take DC and converts it to AC. You cannot charge the battery uh, with this system. You'd have to get the, you know, a dedicated battery charger to charge it. But you also have the Anderson connectors, you know, just plug it in and charge it. And that's the thing that you need. But uh, for just straight up, you just need portable power somewhere. Uh, this is very ideal to have because it is quiet and it's highly reliable. Had no issues with this whatsoever. The main reason that we've uh, upgraded in a way from uh, the yellow all-in-one to this one is because now it's completely encased inside of these uh, toolboxes and it's easily rolled aroundable. So uh, we recently went to a movie on the lawn type system uh, or a place event and then they had, I think it was three or four inverter generators, like one inverter generator on the right side speaker PA, another one on the left side, and then one for where they were running like the projection and the computers and stuff like that. So uh, just being there, it was, I would say a little bit of a disappointment mainly because you can smell the uh, gas or the fumes from the generators and even though they are inverter generators um, you can still hear them on like quiet scenes right and you know what it seems or sounds like to be around generators especially if there's like three of them all right it was a little bit of a disappointment so that kind of inspired i would say me to make uh, this system uh, from the yellow 3000 watt to this one, mainly because this is completely silent. There's nothing and it's five kilowatt hours, right? So I don't know how much, you know, those powered speakers or stuff like that's going to be that's that you need, right? But it's, I, I, I'm sure you could get through a movie with five kilowatt hours, right? Per one of those. So if you're using, you know, you just need portable power anywhere, you know, if you just make three of these, two of these, whatever, you could probably even just share, you know, uh, run extension course to the other side and you would be fine, right? But like I said, uh, that's kind of what inspired it. But I have used this a lot on the job site to run this uh, dust extractor because the dust extractor sometimes uh, when you're, let's just say doing drywall, sometimes they don't have energy inside that place, right? So dust extraction uh, will work fine. And also using an air cleaner uh, while you're doing some of that works really fine. Portable power, five kilowatts of power to go, perfect, right? You could throw this in the trunk if you need to. It's kind of heavy to throw uh, because the battery, but if you have a trailer, roll it onto the trailer. Roll it onto the trailer, you could use it to charge all your, you know, power tool, cordless batteries, your lawnmower batteries or whatever, because this is a five kilowatt hour battery. So you will be good to go. When you're done, come home, charge it overnight, go out next day, gold. Not too many issues, right? So like I said, this is a very reliable system. I really do love this system. Um, and if I had any recommendations for like say Victron is that I need them to make a 48 volt, let's just say 2000 VA Phoenix inverter. That would be awesome because there are maybe a handful of tools that this thing will not run um, even though it can power it on. 
like I said, for like a compressor, right? It can get it started, but it won't be able to keep it powered because there's just too much draw. So if they can make a 2000 VA system, even if it's just a t tad bit wider, but you know, keep the height the same, that would be perfect, all right? So um, if you had any questions, you know, let me know. I uh, hope this video helped you guys out. Um, I purposely designed it so that you have to keep it open to have the power cord plugged in because um, you do not want to run this in close. It will overheat, you know, you can have all kinds of issues. So there's a reason why there is no power uh, accessory port drilled in here for the power to come out because you need to run it open. So. Hope this video helped you guys out. If you have any questions, let us know. Otherwise, have a great day. Get back to work, and we'll see you guys next time.